Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm on LeeChess.org, and I just got paired up playing a 15-2 game. Okay. What to do? How about... Okay, a French. Why not? Okay. Let's see. D5 it is. Uh-huh. Okay, well, let's try for a win of R. Bishop B4. I've seen captures. I've seen push, which is most common. Knight G to E2. Hmm. Okay, I can recall uh, reviewing the white side of this with uh, with an engine not so long ago. And that was one of the suggestions. Um, but I believe black is able to equalize. I'm not sure exactly how, but uh, let's see. What to consider? Well, this is my better bishop. And normally I'd be, you know, when I played bishop before, I did that with the intention to take one day and damage the structure, but it's a bit different now. White is aiming to maintain the structure with this move. So soon a question will be asked of my bishop. Um, I feel like I should just play knight to f6. And just pressurize e5, e4 some more. But uh, I need to be prepared because uh, e5 could be played. And my knight will have to find a new home. So maybe a simpler way to do it. You know, if I'm doing this, I'm basically saying, uh, you know, I'm okay with giving white some space advantage. But maybe I'm not so okay. I think I'm going to capture. And on a3, I'm not going to give up my bishop. Instead, I'm going to drop back. So, pretty modest deployment here. I could challenge the knight right away. And why not? Let's see how white reacts. This is a little bit awkward. He will need to move again. Unless white intends to do something like this, but it doesn't seem right. I believe a knight move is called for here to reinforce e4, knight g3 it is. Okay. Well, at some point, I'm going to want to challenge the d4 pawn with c5. Uh, so I think I'm going to want my knight on d7. Should I do that right now? Um. Yeah, why not? Let's hang on for a second. Yeah, let's get this in right now. Just connect knights. We could have many minor pieces exchanged. Could, uh very easily see both knights exchanged. My queen knight may revisit. Well, not revisit, but I might step foot on f6 with my queen knight as well. My problem piece is my light square bishop. So I know I threw out there I want this break in, but I can also maybe consider some type of light square bishop move like this, or maybe b6, bishop b7. Okay, well, what to do here? I wonder what way white is going to castle. You know? King side, queen side, not quite sure. This is certainly a move directed at the c5 break. Hmm. Well, 
I think it's okay to commit my king. This pawn is something that maybe I could bite at if white really wanted to go queenside. Who knows? Maybe a quick B pawn advance. Yeah, I think I can safely just castle. So let's do this. At some point, it may be interesting to throw a punch at the dark square bishop. He's a bit exposed on the third rank. Accessible. I can still insist on this. And I, I believe that this is the direction I'm going to go in. I don't want to take here so soon. Because if there's a worst piece for white, I would identify that as the knight on g3. He's out of this um, ideal zone for the knights. So I'd like to see knight takes here, and then he's not really a great piece. Okay. I'm happy to see that this bishop is not pointing at my king. That might be a way to show that uh, the light square bishop... Oh, it might be a way to highlight the fact that my light square bishop isn't contributing to this position just yet. Uh, white putting their light square bishop to work. However, there must be some idea connected with this. And it may be aimed at uh, my idea to... Fianchetto. Hmm. I wonder. If I go b6, bishop f3. And on bishop b7, I'm losing material. Hmm. It's a bit annoying. I go b6. Oh, let's see. I mean, I could baby step it if I really wanted to, but ideally I, I would like to get in c5 in one shot. What was my last move? Castles. I'm already thinking back. Was this a slight inaccuracy? Should I have tried to make sure my bishop gets on this diagonal sooner? Oh well. Uh we're gonna we're gonna try to work with it. Hmm. B six Hmm. Uh B six bishop two F three. I could just move my rook out of the way. Yeah, maybe I'm just overthinking it, yeah. We could just get the rook out of the line of fire. And at the same time, white also has to be careful that uh, their king does not get stuck in the center, as this is also a possibility. Okay, well, let's get the bishop there. Probably just an equalish position. It is the type, however where I could see black maybe become the side that maybe plays for something. Uh, there may soon be some target on the queen side. Now that's a bit surprising. I'm most certainly taking with the knight. My knight uh, cancels out theirs from the forward movements. Uh, also, if we have a light square bishop exchange, I'm running with, I'm playing with the, the better bishop. This may be a target. Okay, so an aggressive move here. I could play c5. Hmm. I want to make sure these, these, uh, queenside pawns don't get too far advanced. Well, at some point I may have a, a tempo against g2. 
I think I must strike with c5. Hmm. Um, if the queens are off at some point, I may be able to make a move like h5, h4. That could inconvenience the knight. That may factor in somehow. So, any other candidate moves besides c5? I... Hmm. I don't think so. Okay. Let's go with it. And to be honest, I'm not sure how to uh, recapture. I don't know if I want to play this position with dark square bishops on or not. In the end, if if white initiates this capture on c5, one way or the other, I could end up with split pawns, and I'm just going to have to be content with that. Um... Uh, I will have a half open b file. Rook to b8 would seem sensible. If the queens are still around, I believe a post on b6 would be quite good. I don't want to allow b4 to uh to be played too easily, so here we go. Hmm. With the pawn or the bishop? Hmm. Well, I am threatening to damage their structure when I do this, so Yeah, I, I think it I think it's okay to take with the bishop, yeah. Let's get one more piece exchanged. Hmm. Let's see. Could have many exchanges. We just we're soon to have a an end game here. The queen's off. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Rook f takes. So my king could start to play. What concerns me then in this end in that end game is b4. Hmm. You know what? That's enough to convince me to maybe take with the pawn here so that my bishop combats this b4 advance. Yeah. I think it's important I do it like this. Because that b4 move would be tough to meet. If I would take, then there's this, they'd have an a file, and if I don't take, then we have b5, and he's in my territory. And that's not cool with me at all. Uh, they could start running the A and B pawns, and really, really scary. So I think I made the correct decision here. So they're clearly lining up B4. Okay, well this is just running into pins. It allows B4, so I'm looking at just A5. Uh, yeah, so let's go with it. I got some serious light square weaknesses on the queen side. I would not like to have a knight here, or even a bishop. Fortunately, he's a long way off from doing anything great on the queen side. At some point, a4 can be an idea. One pawn restricting two. If a4 is in, and this pawn is advancing, a3 can be a target after a capture. Okay. Avoiding the dark square bishop exchange. So they're really trying to push through with b4. But I may be okay if it's just one pawn. You know? Uh, I could control the one pawn. If, if b4 is, is in there... Um, I'll look to blockade on c5. Hmm. What more to consider? Well, I could play queen to b6. There isn't this pin anymore. It still makes white work a little bit harder to even get that advance in. I don't see why not. I mean, my queen wants to play, doesn't she? I think she knows her place right now. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four. 
on the B4 square. And white has one, two, three. So not enough. This knight is a struggling piece. Still a struggling piece. My bishop is very strong. At some point, again, this can factor in mate threats or maybe even a bishop takes with then some fancy queen move picking something unprotected up. So he's still out of the ball game. This is a possibility at some point. Maybe they're lining up this. Hmm. Which rook to go to the D file? Can I go can I go with this? It feels a little bit too early to do that. Like maybe B B four is played and then there starts to be some action along the B file. Alright, let's run with this first. On bishop here, I think it loses. Queen here. And I think that this is definitely the the correct rook to go with, because something still may happen on the A file on a B four break. My rook would like some play on the A file, so of the two rooks to go to the d8 square, it's definitely the right one. Well, I'm almost certain it's the right one. Okay. Hmm. What now? That's a pretty strong bishop. Must be said. Oh, you know what? I think I have an idea. One related to forming a battery, with my bishop being the leader. Let's try for that. Um, and this also maybe prepares a4, where the bishop would serve... Well, he would be the better defender of a pawn on a4 than the rook. Because soon, with the only one open file... It's going to be important that my rooks are in a position to always recapture. So this move is preparing a4 as well as maybe queen b7. The g2 point, after all, is unprotected. One attacker, one defender. This is a sensitive point. So if I could induce f3, which may be right around the corner... That would be nice. A way to avoid this type of move would be rook here, and to meet queen b7 with bishop f1. We're going to see about that. Well, first things first, if I, if I do this, maybe rook takes and then bishop takes here? No, I don't think so. Let's go with this first and see how they react. Oh, also, this may soon factor in. If the bishop drops back here, this isn't uh, supported so much. Hmm. At the same time, on h5, there's bishop takes, and then knight takes. It's close to maybe happening. I could try for this. Knight takes, bishop takes, skewers. Hmm. Should I play a4? Or just knight to e4? We both need flight squares. Um, I'm going to keep the tension, I think. Yeah, let's let's go with this a4 move. I don't I don't like that my rook had to babysit a5. So there we go. I like my position. It's a it's a tense one. Just one one little misstep and something bad can happen. All right. Rook recapture. Rook here, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hmm. Wow, are we going to have, like, a bishop ending? Bishop ending only? Do I have anything better than rook takes rook here? How about... 
I right, throw the queen in the corner. Yeah. I would like to get my bishop on this diagonal. This is their best piece. Definitely the best minor piece. Worst piece, this guy. Um, if I'm to identify a worst piece for me, maybe the bishop. My knight is in a good spot. My bishop is one of my better pieces. Still coordinated well with my queen. I would like to see this move. There may be some sacrifice on f3 here. Bishop takes, bishop takes, knight here. There may be a timely check. As soon as that f-pawn moves, this diagonal is opened up. Their king is vulnerable. If I go forward with some type of flight square right around this point, I'd be leaning towards h6. But honestly, I'd like to get more out of a move like that. h5. All right, let's get to the open file. So, are they going to challenge? Yeah. Queen exchange. I really don't want a queen exchange. Well, let's keep the tension. Let's keep pressure on g2. Let's see if they're uh, if they become a bit impatient and make a knight move. Maybe then I could immediately hop into e4. I think that's what's... Oh, actually, with the queen on d3, now may, maybe this is right around the corner. Because takes, takes, my bishop would have some counterpunch on b2. So this is maybe something. There is a difference I'm noticing now with the queen on d3 when compared to uh, c2. This might be the thing that really... Uh, makes the position break down some for white. All right, now can I go through with it? Well, I'm going to try for it. Let's, this is this is now the move. I, I spoke of this. Feels like several several moves ago, but I think it now has its place. I shouldn't have so much concern about the knight having pressure on these squares because my bishop would be patrolling the long diagonal. Scooping up this guy, he would find a nice post here. White can't go pawn grabbing. This bishop is not playing. The two pawns that are split here I have covered with my bishops. And what more? I am under three minutes. I got 24 moves in. All right, well... Do I give that knight a kick right now? Uh, yeah, let's do it. I might be able to break this down further. H3. I want to keep the queens on. In general, I think that's the the correct correct approach. And yeah, this H pawn is the he may turn out to be the MVP, <laughs> the most valuable pawn. So h3 on takes. This is getting broken down big time. I have all these squares covered very well. The entry point squares. I think h3 is the move. Anything else to consider? This is a loose piece on e5. Let's do it. Okay. So they have a super vulnerable king. I have a g7, f7, e6 structure I'm happy with. I have a flight square. Who knows if it's the greatest. It could always be controlled still, but it's still a little bit off. It takes a bit more coordination. So here takes and then bishop here. I don't have to take here just yet. Hmm. Huh.
Less than two. Should I just take here right away? Huh. No. Let me let me get right back here. It's just a mini mini improvement with my queen. Some pressure on the B file. I'd like to see the bishop move, then I take, and then the king is in the line of fire. Alrighty. Is now the time to make some uh, dark square bishop exchange? No, as soon as I move my knight, they're going to move their knight. I wonder if I was too fast with h3. Um, You know what? I could make use of this square, but maybe I should take first, yeah. Let's split these guys up. So now queen b3. Kind of inching in some. Yeah, pins the bishop. Let's do this. Now, I don't know what our next move is, but this kind of feels right. Active square. Maybe this. I don't know, this is still a strong piece. The queen can't go too far. I am putting pressure on c4. Oh. Well, I should maybe be looking a bit more over here, huh? Yeah, let's do this. Let's eye up these uh, holes over here. There's, Yeah, these are these are the more important squares to be eyeing up, most likely. The ones that are right near the king. Because these guys are split, isolated pawns, the squares in front of them are all holes. So these two. I'd like to have a dark square bishop exchange and a knight on one of these two squares. That would be a killer. Can I make that happen? Hmm. Well... Let's get this move in to the open file, maybe the back rank. I'm gonna offer a queen exchange. I don't. I really don't want a queen exchange. Um. Well, actually, if they go with a queen exchange, this queen is restricted, so they they can't go with a queen exchange here, because I could exchange and then take here. Um. What a bugger. Um, this is pretty much a passing move. I'm, I'm not quite sure what to do. I don't want to budge just yet with my knight. I, I want to do this, but I know that as soon as I do this, knight to e4 will probably hit. Yeah. So we have a little back and forth. If they play this really quick, they're probably content with the draw. And I don't want that. Okay, maybe this is a different uh, moment now. Okay, well, let's go for something. Defend here. Dark square bishop exchange. Yeah. But I could still do this. It is a little scary, but these knights offset. I have this square covered from mate. Still want this in. So knight f4. I don't think there should be any great sacrifices here. This bishop is not playing. Let's get the dark square bishops off. Maybe my king is good here. Tough. I think I will be taking the knight out. Mm, this may be something that they could uh, capitalize on. Okay, definitely taking with the knight. Keep the queens on still. I may just do this. This is unprotected. So, queen here. I don't know if I could do this. Maybe if I could establish a knight here, that's something. Yeah, if I could do this, 
Get the queens off. Maybe right now is a moment for that. But no, I'm still going to hold my ground. I want to improve a little bit further. Maybe have my knight here before I go in for some queen exchange. They have isolated pawns in a pawn that is, I'm chalking up as potentially isolated. Yeah, he's, he's, he's cut off, he's disjointed here. So some slow improving moves for me would be queen here. Am I missing anything? 13 seconds. Knight can't go too far. H2. There is a check, but we'll gladly step up to e7. The queen goes too far. Then I have this check. No fancy tactics here. Have this square covered. Offer of a queen exchange. No. Let's go here. Now I'm pointing at b2. Slowly, slowly getting somewhere. Can maybe even post up on f4 and look for this. Uh, that could really, really sting. Okay, maybe maybe even g5 plays a role. Let's do this. My queen is excellent. Eight seconds. My clock is not excellent. A timely g5. Okay. Let's do a night. Oh my goodness, five seconds. I gotta go faster. Maybe closer to getting that queen exchange. Queen here. They they can't move so easily. I could still go for queen h2 stuff. Queen here, queen check. Maybe a knight on e5. Ah, they dropped a pawn. And another one, too. I guess the bishop will have to block, otherwise he falls. Yeah, now I think I'm okay with this. Get right into that c5 square. Well, I could force the issue very soon. Maybe should have captured the knight first. wonder if this was even the right... No, why, why would I do it like this? It's so silly. My opponent's offering a draw. That was, that was not a good idea. This is, this is something vulnerable. I'll be able to centralize my king. Well, this pawn can get all the way to f4. That's nice. I have the better king position. I'm up a pawn. I should still be able to convert this. Yeah, I gotta go with this, I think. Let's get a pass pawn. Hmm. Let's get my knight here, maybe. They're offering a draw. I don't want to draw. Defending this pawn. I want to get my king here very soon. Let's give a check. Get here next. Bishop has to try to go here. Now it is certainly a win. King and pawn ending is winning. Okay. Yeah, they're trying to... I don't know. A little back and forth. They were trying to burn time or whatever, but... Do you have that increment? Who? That was the game of inches, I gotta say. Uh, my opponent wasn't giving much. Uh, I can't quite recall what position it was exactly when I referenced h5, h4, but that turned, to, that turned out to be the key idea. Okay, let's go through it without looking at the analysis for starters. Win a war to start, but we kind of uh, transpose into some 
exchange French. Okay. Yeah, I was able to voice a lot. I think this is the right decision. I guess this will be one to look back on, whether to take with the bishop or the pawn. This was my fear. b4. Now what? If I take, this rook is very happy. This pawn, not so happy. And if I do not take, what do I do? I got to defend the pawn, but now this is always an option. And these, this is a very clear plan. These guys are getting too, too close. So I believe that this is a really, really important decision on how to recapture here. B pawn. I have to make sure I keep this majority at bay. It is a three versus two, after all. So there was a little battle here for the b4 square. I was able to hold it up with a4. And then we had a lot of poking around, didn't we? h5 is now the one moment where I believe I could get away with it, because on this, I get the b2 pawn now. The queen is no longer on c2. That's what kept me from doing that move in what position? Maybe right here, because I'm not getting at b2 right now. But, uh, yeah, the position of the queen is now just a hair different, being on d3. And now the h-pawn is the one that really breaks down white structure. Yeah. Want to keep queens on ideally. I have the safer king. And once we got the dark square bishop exchange, I had an easier time improving. Yeah, notice, notice something here. While we were playing with both bishops, neither of us were able to approach with our kings because we weren't. There's with both bishops still on board. It's not it's not clear where there is a reliable home for your king. So as soon as the dark square bishops were off, now he's getting his king involved, uh, white's getting the king involved, I'm getting my king involved, dark squares opposite the bishops. And yeah, it's easy to go wrong, I guess, right around this point for white. I have a really strong queen, a better knight. If you do peace comparison, better post for the queen, the knight. Uh, maybe slightly better king position. Uh, structure is better. Mm, and the bishop is pretty passive. So these are all these all these positional features all add up. Uh, they of course didn't have to drop a pawn here, but I think they're still struggling some, for sure. I don't know, they kind of have to wait. I don't know if f6 was best. Um, maybe giving a check here and playing this, but I have to be a little bit careful of g5. Maybe g5 wasn't necessary. I could maybe do without g5, but I had some, uh, I had some idea in mind with diverting the pawn away from e4 and sets up some timely forks. Yeah. And this ending here, I wonder if I could just keep queens on. No, I think this is fine, but I shouldn't be capturing this knight, I don't think. Uh, maybe I have to. Uh, maybe, no, 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 I shouldn't be capturing queens. How about this? And then, oh, I don't know. Mm, it's tricky. Because I, I thought even being up upon in this ending, that there may have been some drawing idea where, let's see, right around this point, instead of that bishop move, like bishop here, now I have to do this, and then king here. And my knight, I don't know, like I could do this kind of stuff and still get the pass pawn, but I can't move my knight. I feel like white... A computer would be able to hold this as white, somehow. Yeah, the knight is a bit clumsy. Just forgetting that this 
It'd be different if I had a pawn that needed support. Like, I don't know, if it was closer to the center, and my king could be the one that guards the pawn that the bishop was putting pressure on, but he's so far away, and my knight is awkward having to defend it from b6. Mm. So I wonder if I could have done something better right around here. I'm not, not seeing it just yet, but I guess we could just throw on the engine and uh, see what some of the suggestions are. Yeah, it's even... Yeah, it doesn't like the queen takes e3. But let's just get an analysis. Oh, oh my goodness. White had something. Look at this. Oh man, what did I miss? Oh, they had a fork. Knight, take, knight to f5. Oh my goodness, that would have stung so bad. When I played queen here... Knight f5, game over. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Ouch, that would have hurt really, really bad. Hmm. We were both a bit under pressure there. The clock. Oh, man. I was... Yeah, I was blind to that. Clearly. So that's a loser. Knight to f5. So, well, let's suggest maybe king to d6. Yeah, I was, you know, I wasn't even looking at anything like that. I didn't, I didn't see any offensive type moves White had, but, whew, definitely dodged a bullet there. Ouch. Okay, well, let's just skim through here with the engine. Aside from that, there is a progression there tipping in Black's favor. And that key move I want to have a look at. It's roughly equal for some time. Um, let's see. Yep. Could also question the oh, I went I went past it. So right here. Bishop takes c5. This was my concern. b4. Now what does it want to do? Yeah, uh, I, I don't like this at all. King to f8. Um, and on b5? Hmm, I don't know. I just, I, I see these these pawns just creeping closer, and it's it concerns me. It's still reading level, but look at how these guys just are set into motion. Here, takes, bishop takes. Can white not continue to push? This is, this is something to be avoided. Okay, maybe the computer's holding this, but this is extra scary. You know, like, already I have to be very careful about the number of pieces that are exchanged. If they're all exchanged, then this is a one king and pawn ending for white. These guys are just uh, too far advanced, and at any point they could dart towards the promotion rank. I'm not stopping them. Well, if I'm too far away, they just take off. So, I don't know. I think I made the right decision, even though the, the evaluation is reading, you know, there isn't a fluctuation with it. I, I think I it is the right idea to not even allow these guys to be set into motion. And let's see if h5 was the right move when I played it. I want to go to queen exchange, but... Knight d7? It was it was popping up h5. Now it likes h5. Make up your mind. Hmm. Well, I guess this is one of the moves. I did go forward with it. Yeah, now, now it's something. So I guess they had to go with h3. Because what did he end up doing? He got to h3 and it broke down the whole structure. So this is an instructive point. 
You have to uh, play h3 here. He is still a great thorn, but uh, he isn't putting a dent. He isn't making the g-pawn flinch. He isn't saddling white with two isolated pawns near the white king. So h3 was called for, but because of f3, I'm able to go forward with this plan. And yeah, now these guys are split. Hmm. And a bullet was dodged. Is this the other, another good idea? Knight here. Knight to e8. Yeah, I guess it's okay with this idea. Dark square bishops off. And then slowly get the kings involved. And next time, don't fall for, or even put yourself in a position to get forked like that. Oh, that would have been so bad. So king to d6, it wants to go for. Yeah, pretty uh, decisive advantage there. All these positional factors add up, but you could throw them all out the window if you're playing queen to d4. I would have threw in the towel right there. Okay, well, dodged one bullet, but aside from that, I was uh, pleased with how I played this one out of the uh, French defense. Okay, well, as usual, if you have any feedback to this video, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And as always, I hope you got something out of it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.